Welcome back to Hover Unbox. Today we're checking out VRM thermal performance of a few high-end X570 motherboards from ASUS, ASRock, Gigabyte, and MSI. But before I jump into the test results, let's quickly just go over each motherboard, taking a look at the cooling as well as the VRM layout and design. And I will start with the ASRock Gaming X and Tai Chi. So here is the Gaming X version, and then here is the Tai Chi version. Whoops. So they are quite similar as you can tell, just a little differently uh, themed with the look of the board, but layouts are much the same. And crucially for this testing, the VRM is exactly the same. And the heat sinks are styled slightly differently, but pretty much the same deal on both boards. The Gaming X model costs $350 US, whereas the Tai Chi costs $300. Uh, US. So the main difference being that for the extra $50 you get two and a half gigabit Ethernet and you also get creative cinema audio. So yeah, a little upgrade there to your networking and audio. But other than that, the boards are pretty much identical. And as I said, the VRM components are identical. Anyway, this isn't a motherboard review. Rather, it's a look at VRM thermal performance. So Let's check out what's under the hood. For the controller, ASRock's using the Intersil ISL69147, which isn't a very popular controller, and as far as I can tell, no one else is using it for their X570 motherboards. It's a 6 plus 1 controller, so the likely V-Core configurations would either be the native 6 phases or 12 phases using doublers. ASRock has opted to use doublers and all six signals from the controller to deliver a 12-phase V-Core VRM. Each Intersil ISL 6617A phase doubler connects to a pair of Vachet SIC 634 50-amp power stages. So in total, the board packs a dozen 50-amp power stages, which should be overkill for even the upcoming 3950X. As for cooling, ASRock has strapped on what looks to be a pretty basic pair of aluminium heat sinks which are connected via a single 6mm nickel plated copper heat pipe. The heat sinks are fixed into place using four screws which go through a back plate on the rear side of the board. Sadly though the back plate doesn't actually do anything, it's not connected to the PCB using thermal pads so it doesn't help suck heat away from the back side of the motherboard. That's a bit of a shame. Overall though, a solid looking X570 board and the Tai Chi appears to be quite good value at $300. Just as a quick side note, I realise it would be better to compare this motherboard, particularly the Tai Chi, with the MSI MPG570 Gaming Pro Carbon, ROG Strix X570F Gaming and the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra for example, and I certainly will do that shortly. But the idea of this comparison is to see who offers the best extreme X570 motherboard. Oh, and there's also the ASRock X570 Aqua, but that board isn't available yet, and it will be a very limited edition, but we will have that in for testing soon. Then coming in at twice the price as the ASRock Gaming X, we have the, just get it, I'll land it correctly, uh, the MSI Meg X570 godlike and uh this thing's coming in at a cool 700 dollars us as you can probably tell it is a no compromise type motherboard that throws in pretty much every single feature possible so msi has just gone what features are available yes we want all of them put them all on one motherboard and yeah well the result is this thing Included in the long list of features is an extreme VRM using the Infineon IR35201 controller, the same controller used by every high-end X399 motherboard. In fact, what we have here is an extreme X399 VRM lifted directly from MSI's X399 creation. This means we do have a genuine 16-phase V-Core VRM, as the eight phases from the IR35201 controller are doubled using IR35995 phase doublers, each of which connect to a pair of Infineon TDA2147-2 power stages. The Infineon power stages pack a 70-amp rating, but sadly there's no publicly available spec sheet for these parts. In any case, they are basically overkill, and that was true even for the 32-core 2990WX. Realistically, you could comfortably run this board without any VRM cooling at all. It's really that overkill. Naturally though, being that this is a $700 motherboard, MSI hasn't done that. Instead, a pair of rather large aluminum heat sinks can be found, and they're connected using a copper heat pipe, which also stretches down to the X570 chip. 
There's certainly much more to the X570 godlike, but I won't be diving into anything else for this video. Again, the focus is solely on VRM thermal performance. Another super expensive X570 motherboard is oh, this thing. It's very heavy. This is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme. Uh, it's, it's very extreme, very heavy, but it is perhaps the most interesting of the motherboards we have here as it uses the new Infineon XDPE 13-2 G5C controller, and it is a new 14 plus two phase VRM controller. So yeah, one of the first controllers to go above eight phases for a single controller. So very impressive there. And this has allowed Gigabyte to create a native 14 phase vCore VRM without the need for doublers. Gigabytes included 14 Infineon TDA2147-2 power stages. So this is two less than MSI's godlike, but they haven't had to employ doublers. It's hard to say which configuration provides the best results, and it probably really doesn't matter that much as they are both massively overkill. You could easily power two 3900Xs, so which is better in terms of performance probably doesn't matter. What I can tell you is that the Gigabyte version costs considerably more to implement, so from that standpoint, perhaps MSI went with the better option overall, allowing them to focus budget on other features. That said, I absolutely love the X570 Aorus Extreme. It's easily my favorite X570 motherboard. From day one, Gigabyte's BIOS has been ahead of the rest, and they've been on top of all the releases since. The Extreme also looks amazing, has a feature set that you'd expect from a high-end board at this price point, and it's a completely passive design. Of course, like the Godlike, it is crazy overkill, but if you've got $700 to spend on an X570 motherboard, this is the model I'd be getting. Then finally, we have the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Hero, and this is surprisingly affordable. It's a $380 motherboard. ASUS does have a stupidly expensive $700 motherboard like MSI and Gigabyte, and they call that the formula, but like the Tai Chi and Game EX, the Formula and Hero have the exact same VRM, though the cooling has been changed. The, the Formula uh, incorporates liquid cooling. But anyway, it is an, a very expensive upgrade to the Formula. So for this roundup, we have the Hero. In any case, ASUS didn't want to send the Formula along for comparison. And since we didn't want to blow $800 Aussie getting it, we'll just stick to testing the Hero. For the VRM controller, we have the ASP1405, which I'm pretty sure is a rebadged IR35201, but for whatever reason, ASUS just like to be a bit special. Anyway, what we have here is a true eight phase VRM without a doubling scheme. Whereas Gigabyte and MSI use 70 amp power stages, ASUS has gone with IR355 power stages, which are 60 amp stages. And then we have 60 amp microfin alloy chokes. ASUS uses a slab of aluminum to cool their VRM, Pretty similar to what we see from ASRock and MSI. On paper though, I'd say MSI and Gigabyte have ASUS beat, but ASUS is adamant that they have the best performing VRM with the lowest thermals. So it'll be interesting to see just how accurate that claim is. To apply load to the system, I'm not using a power bug type program like Prime95. For this test, I wanted to use a real world application. And this is typically what we do when testing VARM thermal performance. So yeah, we're using an application that you might actually run on these boards. And that application is Blender. So the load results are reported after an hour long Blender stress test. Now for this video, all testing has been conducted on an open air test bed with no direct airflow. Normally I also test inside a case, but because this testing is massively time consuming, I'm going to save all that fun hard work for when we have the 3950X. For recording temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples. I've placed multiple sensors on multiple power stages, as well as the underside of the board, so I can accurately measure VRM thermals. And then I will be reporting the highest value I recorded on the top side and the back side of the board. And I'll also be reporting the temperature that the boards themselves are claiming that the VRM is running at. And just finally, I'm not reporting Delta T over ambient. Instead, I'm maintaining a room temperature of between 21 and 22 degrees. And I have a thermocouple sitting next to the system to make sure that we're in that working range at all times. 
I decided that a 4.3 gigahertz overclock with 1.4 volts would be good for an extreme type stress test for these boards. And this also allowed me to make sure the voltages were the same across all boards tested. In order to maintain a V core of 1.4 volts under load, the Taichi and Extreme X needed level one LLC enabled, which is the highest level. The Asus Hero required level four, which is the second highest setting. The Gigabyte Extreme was set to extreme, which is the second highest level. And the MSI Godlike to mode two, which is also the second highest level. Under these conditions, the Aorus Extreme produced the best result, peaking at just 57 degrees on the backside of the PCB. The MSI Godlike was just a degree hotter, and we saw the board report a VRM temperature of 57 degrees, while Gigabyte reported 58 degrees, so both were pretty accurate compared to what I was able to measure with some K-type thermocouples. Then we see quite the opposite with the ASUS Hero. Whereas the onboard temperature probe for the VR imported a peak operating temperature of just 50 degrees, our thermocouples on the top and bottom of the PCB measured well above that, with the underside peaking 10 degrees higher at 60 degrees. This made the Hero 1 to 2 degrees hotter than that of the Godlike and 3 degrees hotter than the Extreme. Still certainly not a bad result and much of a muchness overall. Where we see quite a significant jump up in temperature is for the ASRock Tai Chi and Gaming X boards. Both are seen peaking at 72 degrees on the underside of the motherboard, making them around 10 to 12 degrees hotter than the ASUS Hero. I should just note though that those Vachet power stages are rated to run safely at a PCB temperature of up to 125 degrees, so we're in no danger here. Overall, the Gigabyte MSI and ASUS boards appear quite evenly matched while ASRock lags a bit behind, but they are offering the cheapest boards of this roundup, so it's worth keeping that in mind. Out of interest, I reran all the tests again with the voltages and LLC set to auto with PBO plus auto OC enabled. This dropped the temperatures by one to four degrees depending on the board and where we were measuring the temperatures from. The Godlike and Hero were again very similar while the Extreme was three to four degrees cooler. Again though, we see the ASUS onboard temperature probe was reporting temperatures that were significantly lower than what we measured using our thermal probes, whereas MSI and Gigabyte seemed very accurate. So that completes our first wave of X570 VRM thermal testing. As I said earlier, normally we also test inside a well-ventilated case, but given that we're still waiting for the 16 core 3950X and I'll probably end up doing some retesting with that CPU. I didn't want to invest a ridiculous amount of time with the 3900X. Just testing this small sample of boards here took a huge amount of time. Ultimately, we really knew what we were going to find here. On paper, all five boards should handle the 3900X with ease, and as it turns out, they do. The ASRock boards did struggle a little, at least relative to MSI Gigabyte and ASUS, but it will be interesting to see how these ASRock boards compare to similarly priced models from the competition, and I will look at that shortly. Speaking of which, let me know which price range you want me to tackle next. We have entry-level boards up to $170 US, a few options priced around $200 US, some more around $250 US, and then some Tai Chi competitors around $300 US. I suspect the results for those lower tier boards will be much more interesting. Anyway, if you've got boatloads of cash to dump on an AM4 motherboard and for some reason you don't want to wait for Zen 2 based Threadripper parts, then MSI's Godlike, Gigabyte's Extreme and Asus's Hero are all nice options. But personally, I would grab the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme as I feel it's the best offering overall. But of course, make sure you check out some in-depth reviews before pulling the trigger. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like because as I said, this really is quite time consuming and very tedious testing. So yeah, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. And if you wanna join us over on our exclusive private Discord server, then you can uh, join up to our Patreon account. It's not very expensive. You can jump over there and have a look at the various tiers that we offer, but there's some pretty cool perks. And yeah, if you also, want to see more of this kind of testing and more X570 boards are tested, then please let me know in the comment section below and that will motivate me to uh, fire up for the next round of testing. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.